Our men's t-shirt was made here, in this factory, in Bangladesh. Here's one of the people who made it. Our women's t-shirt was made here, in this factory, in Colombia. Doris and Jasmine share a job, but they're separated by the economic realities of the countries they live in. Bangladesh is much poorer than Colombia. And the role the garment industry plays in Bangladesh, the role of our t-shirts, is very different. Jasmine Akhtar lives with her brother, sister-in-law, and roommate in a tiny rooming house. There's no running water, just a gas stove to cook. There's a small TV and a bookcase that holds all her belongings. She leaves for work at 7 a.m. each day, six days a week. She makes one of the lowest wages in the world, about 80 bucks a month. Jasmine has been working in clothing factories since she was 16 years old. And she is not alone. Four million people in Bangladesh work in the garment industry. It's double the number from a decade ago. Which raises a question. What has driven four million people to work long hours in these factories for some of the lowest wages in the world? To answer that question, we went back with Jasmine to the village where she grew up. A lot of garment workers come from villages like Jasmine's, where people worry about getting enough food to eat, and sometimes don't, and where girls are seen as an economic burden. The solution? Find a husband with the means to support your daughter. But finding a good husband costs money, a dowry. And Jasmine's family, her older sister's dowry, sent the family into debt. This was Jasmine's trade-off. Long hours, a monotonous, low-wage job, but in a factory, she says, that feels safe, better than others she's worked in. An improvement, however slight, over a life of even more crushing poverty in her village. In the middle of our t-shirt project, the worst garment industry disaster in history happened in Bangladesh. The factory collapse at Rana Plaza. Suddenly, the world was considering questions that we'd been considering. Who are the people that make our clothes? What are their lives like? More than a thousand people died that day. They died seeking the same things that Jasmine was seeking. A few more calories in their diet, the chance maybe to pay off a debt. They died, in other words, trying to make the same trade-off that Jasmine had. A life of extreme poverty, for one slightly better off. Our women's t-shirt was made in a country with a much more advanced economy, Colombia. Things there are different. Doris Restrepo lives there with her mother in a small apartment. And she supports the two of them on the salary she earns at the factory where our shirts were made. <laughs> Doris makes almost four times what Jasmine makes in Bangladesh and can imagine a life outside the garment industry. Doris has a small side business selling pastries door to door and dreams of one day opening her own business. Pienso que si Dios quiere y todo me sale bien para este año, 
es el último en In Colombia, the garment industry is just an industry. But in Bangladesh, it's a social upheaval. Millions of women like Jasmine, living lives that just 20 years ago would have been hard to imagine. Lives filled with new risks and new possibilities. Most of the money Jasmine earns at the factory, she sends home to her family. But she keeps about 10 bucks a month for herself, for food, or maybe an impulse purchase on her one day off a week. We talked to both labor activists and factory owners about the impact of our t-shirt on the lives of people in Bangladesh. Is our shirt providing opportunities for people like Jasmine, or is it taking advantage of a desperate population? Both the activists and the owners told us the same thing, that the worst possible outcome from tragedies like the factory collapse at Rana Plaza would be for the garment industry to leave Bangladesh altogether. What they don't agree on, what they're fighting about right now, what more needs to be done to improve the lives of workers in Bangladesh? And what does it all have to do with the price of our t-shirt?